So I don't know if anyone else has been feeling this way, but March just seems to have absolutely flown by this year. January and February seem to go at a sort of normal pace, but March just seems to have absolutely zipped by, for me at least. I don't know about, uh, <laughs> about anyone else. Let's get into March's crafting journal. So we'll start off with the things that I started before March, but finished in March. So we've got a couple of those to begin with. The first one is the uh, the book cover slash bag that took a while to make and while I like how it looks I next time would definitely sort of double up on the yarn and use a bigger needle size so that I can sort of let it grow a bit quicker because while I wasn't too bothered necessarily about how long it was going to take to finish it was a bit tedious while I was doing it because it was taking a while to make it. Now I usually I use a DK or larger sized yarn when I'm knitting unless I'm making a sock so it was unusual for it to sort of grow so slowly. At the moment the bag has my next notebook in it the one that I'll be using after this one and then once this is finished this will be living in that and going on the bookshelf and then once I've started the new notebook I will also start a new cover for it. I think that's going to be my tradition going forward so while I'm using the journal I will also make the cover for it and then once the journal's finished it will live in that. Uh, the next one is this crochet raglan jumper so this one did again take a little while to do. It went really well and I really like how it's turned out. It's basically just a little jumper that sits above my chest so or on my chest above my boobs so that I'm not adding sort of bulk and getting too warm. However because of the way that I've done it in this sort of a granny square type style it is quite thick and quite warm so I think this is more of a autumn, winter and early spring sort of jumper rather than one I could use in the summer. The only downside to it as it currently is is that if you're walking around a lot it will ride up a little bit and that can be a little bit annoying so I think before I wear it again in earnest I'm going to get some more of the same yarn and add a few rows so that it sits over my boobs and sort of my boobs can almost hold it down <laughs> if that makes sense and if I make it again I will make it intentionally longer not a full jumper size still sort of over the boob but um but definitely a little bit longer so it's just easier to uh, keep it down <laughs> as I'm moving about so the first thing that I made or started <laughs> in March is a sock and uh, that's added into my odd sock collection. No changes made to it, everything as normal went well and um, fits nicely. The next item is this Wastelander Shrug. So this is a pattern that I bought online from a creator called Lauren Lewis and her page is Handmade by Lauren Lewis. It's a really good pattern, it's really well written and it's suitable for any size because of the way that she's written it as long as you can measure the size of the person that it's being made for you can make it in whatever size and I really like that it went really well it didn't take very long to make um I will make the arms a little bit longer the next time I make one of these just because I thought it was long enough but it wasn't <laughs> um but it's it's long enough but I would like it longer if that makes sense this is going to sound like a strange thing to say but I hope that my friend Emma isn't watching this because I've made her a couple of things for her birthday and I forgot to factor in that I won't see her and her birthday isn't until after I make this video so Emma I hope you're not watching if you are just kind of forget what you're about to see. So I made a I've called it a pencil case cover a pencil case what have you I basically bought a pack of like 12 canvas pouches pencil case, makeup bags, whatever you want to call them. They're uh, about this size and I got them with the intention of crocheting or knitting covers over them because I've got a lot of this sock weight yarn that I'm trying to use up. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that. I bought the pre-made pouches because I hate sewing zips into things. This one is for Emma for her birthday. I think the colours work nicely together as well. And then I also made these earrings for Emma, which I hope she'll like. And then I made another five pairs of earrings <laughs> with the bees and the honeycombs because I figured they'd probably be quite nice for the Etsy shop. People might like them. It helps me use up my stash of bits and bobs that I've got. 
The next thing I made was this cat ear hat. So my idea was to write a pattern for this myself because I've seen patterns about and I figured I could probably figure it out on my own without having to buy a pattern. When I put it on my own head, it looks completely wrong. Like the ears are in the wrong place. It looks too short on my head. It doesn't seem to fit me right. And I don't know if that's just my head shape or if it's more what I was trying to do is more for a child rather than an adult. I don't know. <laughs> it looks fine on this polystyrene head. So I don't know exactly what I was doing wrong. But if I'm going to make one in the future, I'm just going to buy a pattern because this just doesn't work for me, <laughs> if that makes sense. I used some sort of scrap yarn that I have. As you know, I've got quite a lot of spare yarn. So I just used some scrap yarn to do it as a tester and I have unraveled it now. And <laughs> um, the yarn's gone back into my spare yarn stash because I'm not gonna use this. It's not good enough to give or sell to anyone. So I've just chucked it back in the, uh, in the to be used yarn pile rather than it going to waste and not being used. This is the point where I started making a lot more jewellery. So basically I have a lot of, or had, <laughs> a lot of bits and bobs for making earrings. I do make earrings, I usually sell them in my Etsy shop, but what I usually do is make a couple of pairs so that I can take photos and then I'll post that up on Etsy and on my Instagram and things like that. And then if people order more than what I've already made, I'll make them as they're ordered. But the difficulty with doing that is that if I then decide to go to a craft fair or any fair of any sort, somewhere where you might have a table, I never have enough stuff in stock to just sort of pack up and go to one without stressing myself out that I don't have enough things. So in an effort to use up all the bits and bobs that I already have and so that I've got a stock of things to hand, I went on a bit of a rampage and made a load of jewellery. As we go through the pages, you'll see more jewellery that I've been making. So basically, if I have last minute something comes up and I can go to a craft fair or what have you, I don't have to worry about whether I've got stuff to take with me. I've got stuff there already, but also if someone buys something on the Etsy shop as well, I don't have to make the jewellery first. I just package it up and send it out. So it's a bit quicker for them as well. On this day, I made five pairs of the large moon earrings, nine pairs of these dagger earrings and 10 pairs of the pink mushroom earrings. I've put them on a backing card. So I have a lot of sort of old cards hanging around from either I've bought like washi stickers and they usually come with a nice card backing or I've got postcards that I've not used because I don't send them to anyone. I'm just a bit of a magpie. I'll grab things and go, oh, that's nice. And I'll buy it without actually having a reason to use it. So what I did was cut those down to size and then I've put holes in them to mount the earrings onto. So I have in the past tried to punch the holes myself, but they never look even and they never look neat. So I got this really nice little punch, which just it's for doing earring cards, so it just punches two holes nice and evenly spaced. And that's great for stud earrings because it doesn't matter what size the card is, you can mount it. As you can see, there's too much sort of space around the card to be able to put the earrings through the hole. So to get around that problem, what I'm doing is using some spare yarn to go through the hole and loop around the earring and tie it at the back. The next thing I started in a bid to get rid of a lot of the extra yarn that I have is this scrappy granny square blanket. It's actually what I'm using as the background here. So uh, <laughs> you can see it there. It's not finished yet. Um, obviously, as you can see, I've not finished it. My idea is to make it at least six foot by six foot. So it's kind of big enough to go on a bed or on a sofa or a lap blanket or what have you. And I don't plan on keeping this blanket. So I will go into this in more detail at the end of the video. But basically, once this blanket is finished, I'll post it up on Instagram. And if you want it, you can have it for free. If you live in the UK, it will be completely free. If you live outside the UK, I might ask for a contribution to the postage just because sending it outside the country does tend to get a little bit more expensive. But if you would like this blanket when it's done, follow me on Instagram and you could have it. It will be on a first come first serve basis, basically. I'm not going to pick and choose. I've also made a note of how I've done the granny square because if you've made a granny square before, you'll know that there are a few different ways you can do it. The general consistency throughout granny squares is that it's clusters of three either double or half double crochets um but you could have 
chains between them you could have no chains in the corners you could have several chains what i've done is i've had one chain between and then three chains in the corner and i've made a note of it so that if i do put this away for an extended period of time and i forget what it was that i was doing i can have a look at this and i will know what i was doing to carry on in the same vein so it doesn't end up looking weird and misshapen at the end and then I made some more earrings. So I made five pairs of the Star and Moon earrings and then one each of these different colours of the gem earrings. These are all up on Etsy, by the way. So if you do want to buy any, you can have a look on there. <laughs> and then I made some stitch markers. The picture is in a weird place in the notebook because I had already put the glue on the back of the picture and then I dropped it and it pretty much stuck instantly. I tried pulling it off but it was just going to either rip the picture or the page. I figured it was easy to just leave it where it was. <laughs> so these are made with some of the charms that I've had. Again, like I said earlier, I see things, I go, oh nice, and then I'll just buy it without having a plan. So these were those, or part of them. <laughs> these stitch markers are fine for crochet and for knitting as well because they are um, a lever back earring fitting at the top so it can work for either these are again on my etsy shop not all in one item these are just all the ones i made at that point but i've got other stitch markers as well uh, and then i made more earrings <laughs> as well um, so i made more of the crystal earrings and i finished off all of the supplies that i had of the bee and the honeycomb earrings i've not put pictures in here because i've already put pictures earlier on in the book the page does look a little bit bare <laughs> Um, and then I made another pencil case pouch, whatever you want to call it. I think I've named it a different thing every time I've put it in this book, but it's basically the same thing. <laughs> On this one, I made a note of exactly what I did so that when I make them again, I can look back on it and make sure that I'm doing the same thing. I will put this over into my Excel spreadsheet with all my patterns on because once I have finished with this notebook, it will be put away and I won't have it to refer to if I want to make any more. And then I made more earrings, but this time I made some stud ones. Whenever I make stud earrings, I always end up being a little bit annoyed with myself that I stretched my ears as much as I did when I was younger. I like how my stretched ears look and I don't necessarily regret it in general, but I regret that I'm not able to wear stud earrings anymore because these are really cute and I really like them but they would just fall out if I tried to wear them. I can wear the dangly earrings that I make though, and I do when I'm uh, feeling a bit fancy. And then I made another case. Um, these don't take me very long to make. These don't take very long to make, which is really handy. I think I bashed this one out in an evening and then um, the next day I made another two in the same evening. Um, <clears throat> or I might've made one in the afternoon and one in the evening if that was a weekend, I think it was. Um, I have kept this one for myself, um, so in that I keep my spare phone bits, so like USB adapter, I've got my charging cables in there and a couple of pairs of headphones just in case I need any of that kind of stuff while I'm out and about. I also have a, a power bank that I keep in there in case I'm somewhere where I don't have something to plug into so that I can charge things also someone else can if they're with me. And I find it handy if I have all of those things just in that pouch rather than sort of free floating about my bag because I'm less likely to be able to find things if they're just free floating. These are really good for using up all of the yarn that I've got, the sock weight yarn, and um, I'm going to keep making them. I think I've got five or six more pouches so when I have an evening free and I've not got anything else that I want to make I can get these out and uh, and make another one of these and then I'm also using up some of the charms that I've got spare with the uh, the zipper pull there and then I made another pouch I went a little bit overboard with the amount of yarn that I stuck in on this one I don't know why I did that now um Mum, if you are watching this video, please close your eyes. I know you know what you're getting, but you don't know what it looks like. So if you don't want to spoil your surprise, please close your eyes and I will tell you when you can open them again. So I've made a pair of socks for my mum, which she requested. So that's why she knows she's getting them. My mum's feet are slightly smaller than mine. Um, so all I did was make them a little bit shorter than the ones I make for myself. And I've made a note of it for future if mum wants any more socks going forward. All right, you can come back now, mum. 
So the next thing that I have started, I'm not finished it yet, is a crocheted overdress, which I've based on the Wastelander pattern. So the Wastelander shrug that I made earlier in the month, it's basically that, but I'm going to make it a lot longer. So I am I'm currently, I've finished the sort of the chest body area. I've done one sleeve and part of the other. And once I finish the second sleeve, I'll be adding to the body of the dress and my plan is to do increases just on the sides as and when it needs it because obviously my body isn't all straight up and down the same size as my chest and this is going to take me a while because it is going to be almost certainly floor length at least ankle length anyway like maybe a walking length rather than floor length so this is one that is going to take me a while because I'm going to do it in bits and bobs every now and then because I don't want to get bored of it and put it away and then not finish it. But the great thing about it, because it's crochet, the great thing about it is that because of the way that it's made, I can try it on as I'm making it to see how the weight of the yarn pulls on it because I'm not going to measure how long I want it to be, make it that length and then discover that actually there's about two foot more than I needed because the weight of the yarn has pulled it down and made it longer than it is with no tension on it. So every now and then I'll be putting it on, seeing how it falls and if I want to go any further or if I can stop at that point. I'm hoping that I can get this done in the next month or two just so that I have it to wear during the summer. This I technically started last year but finished this month because I was clearing out a box of spare yarn that I'd put into the spare bedroom and completely forgotten about. So I, I had a couple of hours free last weekend and thought, I know, I'll dig through that box and reorganise things a little bit and see what I've got to work with. And as I was going through the bits of yarn in the box, I found basically most of a blanket that I had started and not finished. Um... I think my original plan was to make it into a blanket, but I'd then run out of the colours of yarn that I was using. So I put it away to then get the yarns again at another point and I completely forgot that I'd started it. But it's a really good size to be a cushion cover. What I did was I bought a, a cushion insert and I've sewn it on to the cushion. However, I think I should have got a bigger cushion size. At some point, I'm going to buy another cushion insert to swap this over and then I'll make another cushion cover for the cushion that's in here. But that'll be a little while off yet, I think, because the cushion's perfectly fine as it is. It's just a little bit baggy, but it's not the end of the world. It still functions how it should do. And that's it for this month. So as I mentioned just then, I found this big box of extra yarn that I had and I realised just how much extra yarn I have in general, not just in that one box. So, so my mission over the next few months is to use up as much yarn that I have already as possible. I'm imposing a few rules on myself, which I kind of imposed on myself last year, but I'm going to do it to a larger extent. So the rules are don't buy any more yarn unless it's for a commission or an order for a customer. I'm not going to buy any more yarn, even if it's for like a gift that I'm giving someone as best I can. I need to try and use the yarn that I have already and give away as much as possible of what I make. So there will be a couple of things that I'm going to make for myself. That I know I'm going to keep. So one thing is that I want to make a floor cushion for the living room and um, I've already earmarked a load of yarn for that. I'm hoping that I can use up a lot of yarn in doing that, but I will still have a lot of other yarn left over besides. So if you follow me on Instagram, anytime I finish something that I'll be giving away, I'll post about it. And when I say free, I mean it. So as long as you're in the UK, I won't charge you anything for it at all. It will be on a first come first serve basis. So if I've got five things that I've made, first five people will get them. If you live outside of the UK, I might ask for a contribution towards postage if the postage is quite a lot because if say for example it's this blanket at six foot going abroad it'll probably cost a fair bit in postage but if it's only going to be a few quid I don't mind I can absorb that cost it's not the end of the world because my aim is to use up all this yarn and not have too much stuff in my own house like I said there are a couple of things that I've earmarked that I'm going to make myself but for the most part I want to give things out to people as much as I can. Having said that though, the earrings and the stitch markers and things that I've um, made in the last month that I've talked about in here, 
they are all up on my Etsy so if you do want to purchase any of those you can do by following the link in the description below. If you've got any requests or any suggestions of things that I can make with all this extra yarn that I have please let me know either in the comments or send me a message on Instagram or whatever and uh, yeah I'll see you next month.